welcome back. It is the weekly vlog, but it is Thursday. <laughs> October, let's see, 20th. I didn't even do a calendar today because we had a situation. So uh, Miss Sam took over calendar. But anyway, I can't believe it's already Thursday. It's pumpkin week. We're having so much fun, but it's just been, it's been a little wild. We're still getting packages in here and there. So then during breaks, I'm like setting things up or we're doing projects, you know, our costumes and it just seems like every time that I do have a break, I have things that I need to do and I'm not grabbing the camera. So I'm sorry, I'm trying. But I do wanna take you around and show you a couple things before the kids come in from lunch and then hopefully we'll have an afternoon break outside as well and then I can like really get into the details for you guys. Um, my Tuesday talk this week coming up is going to be about parent communication because I've had a lot of questions about that and hopefully I can get that recorded as well. We'll see. Here we go. All right, the first thing I was gonna show you is that we are in the middle of carving a pumpkin. We took pictures of the kids getting all the pulp and seeds out, and then we used Starfall. I don't know if you know this, but you can build a pumpkin on Starfall. And I let them help me build the pumpkin, and these are the shapes that they picked as a class. So I'm trying to make our pumpkin look like that. Wish me luck. I know I said that we keep getting new packages, which we're very thankful for. I don't want it to sound like that, especially these younger age toys. I feel like my classroom does not have a lot of these things. So these are some of the things that we got, and our, our little one is already loving them. We had a hard time getting him away from them to go to lunch, which he also loves food. So we are thinking about using this shelf, moving the crayons a different area. We don't know where yet. And like using this shelf to hold some of those items that are more for the three-year-old age group because this is the area they like to hang out in anyways. They love the couch, they love the chair, books, and I just think it'll all be in this area. While we're over at this table, this is the Play-Doh for this week. It's pumpkin week and it looks this beautiful because we got so many new toys that kids have actually not been picking Play-Doh, which is shocking. So hopefully someone plays with it. We only have two more days and Miss Sam nailed this. We have pumpkin cutouts, our orange color. We still have the beans and the eyeballs, but we have these cute little wooden pumpkins that they can add, some vines, and then these little pumpkins as well. All right, for sensory this week, we kept the same filler, and we added a couple of those felt pumpkins, and then we have some of the number cards that are over here that match. So like we have the number eight, and then you have to find the dots that have eight and put them together. We also have these in here for like vines and they've been making bracelets with them. And really they just love to play with this part. We add extra stuff in there, but they will sit here forever and just play with the actual filler of it. Here's our box of stuff that we are in the middle of unpacking. We also have our art station set up over here, but we opened up these roll on painters and let them, you can't do it like up and down on the easel. You have to do it flat on a table. So one of our students, did art and made this creation with them. They're kind of cool. We have some more puzzles, which we're gonna put in a little calm down area up in the office. We're gonna share our wealth because there is so much stuff. And then this, the next dramatic play is farm and Miss Sam is going to make this a tractor. <laughs> she said, don't worry, it's not gonna be that big. I'm like, uh, it looks pretty big to me. So we'll see how that turns out. And then before the kids come, I'm going to show you guys our costume stuff. So we're keeping everything up here. These are our hats that we used last year for being the dinosaur like trainers. And we're just hot gluing some tool to the bottom because we're gonna be beekeepers and we're gonna hot glue some bees on there. They come in on Friday. These are bubble wrap wings. So we're gonna put the wings on the back, kind of put them together with the black pipe cleaners. Then, we have our yellow tutus for our girls. The shirts that we have, we asked everyone to bring in a black shirt and we just added some stripes of vinyl down it. The best part, well there's two best parts. This one, Miss Sam finished these, she literally hand glued every single one of these. She didn't cut out each shape, she actually has a machine, not the Cricut, it's like a little hole punch kind of thing but it shapes out hexagons. And then she glued on these, these are their bags for their candy little hive and then their hats, I'll get this one, are going to look like this, so cute. And their little antennas are still kinda, we're trying to figure that part out so they don't keep falling off. So once all of that comes together, it's gonna be so cute. They're all gonna be bees. The boys are just gonna wear black pants. The girls will have black pants with the tutu, their shirt, their little hat, their little bag, their wings. And then the teachers are gonna be beekeepers with like 
all white and our shirt's gonna say something really cute that we don't know yet. So I'll be back on hopefully during my afternoon break. Hello, happy Friday. I, I just keep doing this to myself and honestly, there's no excuse. I literally just use my breaks in the week. I'm like, oh, I have more time. I don't need to record today. And then it gets to be Friday and I'm stressed and I have all this recording to do and I gotta learn my lesson. Anyways, I'm gonna go through the small groups and then the rest of the week, wrap up this weekly vlog, and then maybe during lunch, I'll do my Tuesday talk about parent communication. It's gonna be a good one. I feel like it has a lot of helpful things you guys will enjoy and it can hopefully help you with your parent communication. Okay, so I'm gonna go through our math groups first and then I'll touch on those literacy groups even though our literacy groups are becoming pretty routine and very similar each week, just switching a couple things out. Our math focus is patterning and counting to 20. So what I did on my slide is I put a counting to 20 video of Jack Hartman and then like next week I'm gonna do a different counting to 20 video but I did it the whole week so they could learn it. So we did that as like a little brain break and then I had a cute little activity each day to use the kids or um, like little buttons or just different things for A, B only pattern. So the first day we did an A, B pattern with the kids. We said, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. And they got to stand up and they had to help me build the line. That's always a top tip of mine is to use the kids any way you can when you're introducing a new topic because at this age they're all about me and that just clicks for them. And then like the next day I found like different um, posters on Pinterest or different like worksheets and I just like screenshot it and like put it on the slide. You can like use a pencil on the slideshow to like screenshot it on there and then you can draw on it. And so that's what we did. We had the screen, like a little image, and then I would draw with them helping me what comes next. And it was like, one was like bears and the other one was little shape magnets that someone had taken a picture of, a poster that they made and then they had blank ones to fill in. So we did that, that was like our whole group time. Then they went to small groups and that's where like I did the direct teaching related to AB patterns. So I kept it super simple and I have a bucket of cubes and that's what we did. I used my planning sheet and so the first day I meet with like my highest group and what we did is they got to make their own AB pattern. So I said, you know, you're gonna pick two colors and build a pattern, let's see how far you can go. And then I timed them and then we like measured who got the highest and make sure it was correct. <clears throat> so they were advanced enough to where I had already taught it on the rug and they could just apply it right away. Then on Tuesday I meet with my lower group that um, the, the three-year-olds that are kind of working not so much as academic skills but more of the you know stay in a group I tell you guys this every week but we just use the cubes still the same resource and we just tried to get them to build towers which sounds like it would be super easy but eh, you know like even getting them to put things together sometimes they're like no thanks they want to just like run their hands through the bucket or I make I make a tower and they just want to break it apart you know so really just working on timing that and seeing if we can get them to do something that we're doing and then Wednesday and Thursday I work with my middle group so they're they're like slightly leveled differently, but mostly they are the same skill level, so the activity is usually the same. The Thursday group, sometimes I can extend it a little bit at the end to get closer to that first group that I have, but usually the activity is the same. So what I did with them was I built an AB pattern, so I would say, oh, I have white and orange. What's gonna come next? And we would build it together, and then I would give them two colors and say, okay, this is the beginning of your pattern and I would give it to them and I would say can you read the colors for me now you continue to build it on your own so it kind of gave them where to start instead of the higher group it was like a free-for-all you pick your colors you build it you get started you repeat it okay super easy with just like a simple tool you have in the classroom but very engaging and then with my paper, I have these for Miss Sam and Miss Whitney now too, and it has been amazing. They, they like it because then they know what they can prep and who is coming to their table before. It was on the slide and it was kind of like a surprise for all of us because we would like click the slide and then it would be like, okay, this is who you have. And the reason that that was different is because last year I had a center chart. You know, we didn't have all this technology. So I had like a chart on the whiteboard and then they could easily see 
oh, we're moving these kids down, that's who's gonna be in each group. But since it was digital, it, the slide wasn't up yet, and then it was confusing to not know which group you were gonna have, especially to prepare, since the activities are a little different depending on who you have. But Miss Sam's group worked on this activity as like the core. It's how many pumpkins. So I have these cards with the pumpkin cute little numbers. And then they just flip over a card, they put it here, and then they use the holiday erasers to fill the 10 frame with that. So those two middle groups, we're working on numbers mostly one to 10 to start with, and then we could elevate, because you know the goal is numbers one to 20. So then we also have the pumpkin with two 10 frames. So if she noticed that some of the kids in that group were able to do numbers one to 10, then she could then move over to the double 10 frame and use the numbers 11 to 20. And then that lower group, she just worked on Play-Doh and numbers, and so we had like little number mats, you know, and so it would be like rolling a snake and putting it on one and rolling one ball, and sometimes that's more of the teacher doing it and then like helping a little bit and the teacher just modeling that vocabulary over and over. Okay, and then the higher group just went straight to the how many pumpkins all the way numbers 11 to 20. This Whitney's group, very similar with how I set it up. It's just a different activity. Pumpkin towers, so they use the same number cards, flipped it over, and then they had to build that many um, cubes. They have another set of cubes. They would build that many cubes in a tower and then they had to find the match on here of the number eight and then they would put the eight tower on top of that. So those two middle groups did this. If they were ready, then she would give them the 10 to 20 one. And then the higher group started with the 10 to 20, which are very high towers. Okay, and then computer group was the same. They, you know, computer's always the top choice that they like. Um, okay, so that's math groups. Also, I have an entire um, center bundle that I made with these pumpkin resources in it, so I can link that down below for you. It has other things too. Those are just the resources we use this week. For literacy, you know I'm working on my lovely product that I put a Tuesday talk about. I'll link that down below for you guys. It's from Natalie Lynn, and it was letter I week, so we did our letter I lesson plan for the, um, the middle groups, and then for my higher group, we moved right along. We did am, now we're doing at. And so this was super fun. We did the sight word the and the sight word C. And then as like a warm up activity for those groups, you know, we're working on rhyming as our skill, so we we're still able to get to some of these. This is a resource from thisreadingmama.com and it has a pumpkin with like a cutout. Obviously these two are not matching, but as a picture and you have to find the other part of the pumpkin to match it up. So we did that as like a warm up on the first time that they came to my table. And then we practiced writing the letter I, things like that. The kids also get to take it home. They highlighted the sight word, they built the sight word. My group is gonna say the same, just changing what the skill is. Then for Miss Sam, same thing, you know, she does her letter craft. This week was letter I for Igloo. And then we decided the second rotation she was gonna do a themed craft, because I said last week that we're gonna do more process art instead of product art in our art center to get the kids to actually come there. And this is what we made, Spookly the Square Pumpkin, because we read that this week, and we also watched the video. And it came out so cute. Here's a picture of all of them hanging up in our hallway outside, as well as our door where we're measuring the kids how many pumpkins tall they are. Super cute. For Miss Whitney's group, she did the same activity from Natalie Lynn, which was the sorting of the letter I pictures. And then with the higher group, she did a prompt in the writing, like fine motor journal. And then day two, she did a fine motor journal, letter I activity, tracing the I, things like that. Okay, and then computer, which we are using computer for the first two days. And then the second two days, we're letting them sit in our library because it's super cute. And we got a new like, book display, finally, that I can show you. I don't think I showed it yet. And so it's been like actually a library center, which is exciting, finally. Okay, I'm gonna show you the slides for the rest of the stuff just to catch you guys up on social emotional and literacy. I think that's it. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so for social emotional on Monday, we have been sending home our class pets. So we've been sharing about Daisy and Dew. Okay, and then on Tuesday we did our puppets. The topic is caring and helping. And we also did our card information. So we kind of double up on day one and day two. Then for Wednesday we did caring and helpful again. We re-brought up the puppets to use them for these different scenarios and how they would feel and what you could say. So the boy is sad because his tower fell over. We kind of role-played what 
the puppets could say to be caring and helpful for that little boy. Then on Thursday, we reviewed our accident part from before when things are an accident and then we talked about this book of I am caring and ways that you can show that you care and then today we read this story be kind it was a YouTube version of it I have this book somewhere but I literally couldn't find it so we just talked about how it means to be kind and that they can get bonus stickers for being kind to their friends all right so I'm gonna bring us back for literacy our letter this week was letter I so on Monday we reveal the letter I with these pictures from our curriculum and then we read our scholastic letter I book then on Tuesday we do our um, letter I song and we read Spookly the square pumpkin and we described what he looked like on the outside and how he was on the inside like nice caring helpful brave things like that then on Wednesday it was our cooking day then on Thursday we do our see it say it sign it song and then we read one of my favorite books, Pumpkin Jack. It goes through the life cycle of a pumpkin. So we put these kind of out of order and then we just wrote on top of them like one, two, three, four, five, six. And we carved a pumpkin. Then on Friday today, we listened to our ABC Mouse song and we did our show and share bags. Our poem this week is I'm a Little Pumpkin and it's just like to the I'm a Little Teacup and we're just gonna glue in a little poem today with a little pumpkin and a draw of vine and some leaves and I think that's it I'm gonna show you our pumpkin we might donate it to our science teacher that's on campus for all grade levels so we can watch it decompose and then I don't have to be in charge of it at my old school we had a garden so we were able to do that out in our garden but here we don't even have a playground yet and it's gonna be turf and all that so we're not there yet so we'll let him handle it and then we'll come and look at it every once in a while all right we also got booed today on staff it was super sweet we're in the middle of erasing it but put this for all of us in pre-k we got little candy bags and then on the back of it we write down the teachers that have already been booed and then we need to boo the next group of teachers here's my pumpkin and then i don't think i showed you these these are just fun little crafts that we're making for the parents mommy's monster little handprint crafts are always a fan favorite and then we got real wild this year and did trick or treat smell my feet <laughs> so cute Okay, I think that's everything. So as usual, if you like this video, don't forget that like. It really helps other people find our videos. Subscribe to the channel so you can see more and notification bell. We'll see you next week. Bye.